Joining us now on the Heaster Automotive Group Hotline, Roddy Jones, ACC Network, ESPN. He's, he'll be in town tomorrow night for the Carolina and Duke game over at Wallace Wade Stadium. Roddy, appreciate you taking some time. It is a Friday, so when, yep. when that happens, we love to talk to you on Fridays. Fridays with Roddy. Uh, what has Duke done in this quick start under Mike Elko that has impressed you? I first off, Joe, I have to give a lot of credit to Mike Elko for for being able to to really get this team all playing together, playing fast, playing hard, um, and, and really playing free. It felt like a team that was really constricted. Um, if, if we're being honest, for the majority yeah. of the David Cutcliffe era, but but certainly there towards the end, and it worked for a long time. But that change in voice uh, really, really has helped him. I think he's done a great job hiring coordinators. Rob Smith on the defensive side has done a really nice job getting that defense to play faster than they had been in the past, more confidently than they had been in the past. And then Kevin Johns, I think, I would put him as the most underrated offensive coordinator in the conference right now with what he's done with that offense. I mean, think about the offensive play that they've gotten the last three years, and he has really turned them around by – Really capitalizing on the playmakers they have, turning Jordan Moore into a, to a to a weapon, uh, utilizing Jalen Calhoun in a way that we haven't seen, uh, hadn't seen the last few years. You know, figuring out how to use Nikki Dalmolin and and Eli Pankle, and then obviously Riley Leonard, letting him run and and be himself, and sort of mitigating some of the places where they're not quite as strong. So so I've been really impressed with what they've been able to do there. I I, I kind of said it before the season, like I felt like this was a team whose talent didn't reflect their record over the last few years. It was a more talented team that they had shown than they had shown uh, and were really hampered by turnovers and poor quarterback play. But but now that they've figured that out and he's got an experienced staff, I've been really impressed, especially when you compare that to the three other first year head coaches who, who have felt like they've struggled to do the same thing. Roddy Jones, ACC Network, ESPN, joining us here on the OG and Roddy, before we get into Carolina and the unbelievable start that Drake May has gotten off to, does this really, in your mind, come down to can Duke's offense take advantage of the opportunities that Carolina's defense will give them? It does, and particularly in the red zone, I actually feel like that's kind of where the game starts. I have zero doubts that that both teams are going to be able to move the ball up and down the field. I mean, Carolina has allowed a ton of yardage to just about everybody they've played, but they've gotten better keeping people out of the end zone. Uh, Duke is a, is a defense that that I think Carolina is going to have success with, and that has more to do with Carolina's offense than Duke's defense. But statistically, they're one of the worst defenses in the conference. Some of that has to do with the Kansas game, but that Kansas team was the best offense they've faced at this point, and they were able to move the ball up and down the field uh, in a unique system. But but nonetheless, so so yeah, I I think it starts on on whether or not Duke is going to be able to, to score in the in the red zone. Uh, it's a place where Carolina has been fantastic or has been really good lately and not fantastic. Um, but but Duke makes it tough on people. They're a great first down team. They don't allow a lot of tackles for loss. They don't allow a lot of sacks. So they do stay on schedule and they get into those third and short situations consistently. Uh, and they will be able to do that against Carolina, who allows you to throw the ball underneath and then re relies on coming up and tackling you. So so I, I don't know if they're going to be able to continually be able to score touchdowns because I don't think field goals win this thing. Um, but I do think it's going to be a fascinating game because both teams like to go for it on fourth down. And like I said, both offenses, I think, will have a lot of success. I think I could speak for most people when I say that Duke's four and two start is a surprise. <laughs> Carolina's five and one start might not necessarily be a surprise, but I, I think it is in this sense. That win over Miami gives them the inside track. They're in the driver's seat, in my opinion, now in the coastal division. And after last year and the transition from Sam Howell and uh, the coaching staff on the defensive side and some of the personnel losses that they had in the NFL draft, let's let's not forget they they lost two offensive linemen to the NFL draft. Yeah. You, you know, I, I Carolina's done a pretty good job, particularly after the way that the season started. Drake May, 21 touchdowns, three interceptions. My gosh, he's having a season. Uh, what has impressed you about Drake May? I think just his overall, first off, the the talent, because if it were a quarterback competition, if it really was a quarterback competition in the fall and it was as close as they said it was, then Jacoby Criswell could start for most teams in this conference because Drake May has been absolutely incredible. So the talent has really impressed me. The poise, the daringness, um, the, the athleticism, all of it has been impressive. And then the ability to consistently sustain uh, the level of success that he's had. Uh, second half, well, really the last or the first half and second half of Miami excluded, 
he's really played mistake free football for the most part and i and i think it's it's been really impressive for a young player it'll be interesting to see how he rebounds there um but you mentioned the sam howell thing and i i think you have to 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 give a lot of credit to mac brown and a lot of credit to the build here like great programs when they're being built are able to to take that next step especially at the most important positions Clemson did it with Taj Boyd. When he left, we were all wondering, what is Clemson going to do? What's going to happen with this Clemson offense? And they've got this guy named Deshaun Watson who who shows up and is a freshman. And, and then by his sophomore year, he's one of the best players in the country. And then obviously there's the Kelly Bryant, um, you know, transition after after Deshaun. But I think I think Carolina's in that Taj Boyd to Deshaun Watson phase right now, going from Sam Howell to Drake May, a guy that has the ability to be an NFL quarterback, a high draft pick. Um, he has just been incredibly impressive physically and also from a maturity standpoint managing this offense. I'm trying to think back to kickoff. You were right last year when you talked me out of the Tar Heels. Did you stick with Pitt this year, or which way did I you did start stick the season with? Okay. I did stick with Pitt. I mean, I still have Pitt. a shot. Yeah. Though. Let's not get yeah, crazy they here. Do. I think – and and look, Carolina's in a situation, and I'm not saying they're. I think Carolina's the favorite right now. Yeah. Um, but when you look at the the coastal, the the margin of of difference between these two teams isn't huge. I think Carolina's sort of extending it as they get better on defense, but the rest of them, it's it, until you get to the bottom, isn't isn't huge. Uh, and, and Carolina has to play Wake and NC State from yeah. the Atlantic. You look at Clemson. I mean, you look at, at Pitt. They play Syracuse and they play Louisville from the other side. So they've got the easier road. And then Miami plays Clemson down the line. Um, and, and Florida State, obviously. Georgia Tech plays Florida State, if you consider Georgia Tech a contender in this, which, by the record, I'm going to throw them in there. Um, but but it's it's a tough road for in, for for UNC down the stretch. Uh, but I do think they are they, they should be the, uh, the favorite right now. Roddy Jones, ACC Network, ESPN, taking some time for us on this Friday to join us right here on the OG. And... All right, let's go to the other side real quick. We talked a little bit. Of, you talked a little bit about Clemson and, and what they've been able to do and transition as a program. NC State loses Devin Leary in the Florida State win, second half, fourth quarter. They win without him. What do you think of the Wolfpack's chances this week on the road against a top twenty-five opponent uh, without Devin Leary? Uh, I think they're very good. Um, I, I, uh, th I, this is going to sound like I'm, I'm, you know, taking away from what Syracuse has done this season early on in this season. And I'm not, you can't take away wins. You certainly, I, and I certainly don't want to, but when you look at how this team's played, I mean, Purdue had to implode at the end of that game in order for them to win the Purdue game. And Virginia had a real shot and Virginia's in contention for being the worst team in the league right now. So, so Syracuse defensively has been very good and they've been very consistent all season, Offensively, as the level of play has improved, the best two defenses that they've faced, Purdue and Virginia, they really struggled to run the ball, and they've got Sean Tucker. Um, they have they have struggled to get consistent offense going um, because of the the lack of of weapons, proven weapons on the outside. I think Aronde Gadsden's been fantastic. Garrett Trader's been much improved, but as the level of competition has ratcheted up. Uh, they've struggled offensively, and I think that will not only continue, I think it'll be exacerbated this week. The, NC State's defensive line has played their tails off uh, the entire season, but certainly in the last few weeks when you when you look at what they did against Clemson um, a few weeks ago and then when you look at what they did against Florida State, I, I thought that that group was a difference-making group. The linebackers are fantastic. The secondary has been playing pretty well. Uh, so I think Syracuse is going to have a tough time. And, and and if you get into a game where it's about field position, defense, field position, and then trying to figure something out in special teams, I trust NC State a lot more. And I trust, you know, Chris Dunn's going to have like four field goals in this game. And it's probably going to be a 12 Probably game yeah. and NC State's going to win. <laughs> and, 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 and it's going to feel like it was a much bigger margin of victory. But but as much as NC State, I think, will probably struggle offensively, I think they'll be able to figure out something, um, something more than what NC, what, uh, what Syracuse is going to be able to figure out against that excellent defense. Uh, which, by the way, this is my public statement that Drake Thomas should be in the running, if not first, in, in line for Defensive Player of the Year right now. I okay. tried to get him in that conversation last year. He's playing better than he did at the end of last year. The dude's been incredible. He's got my Defensive Player of the Year vote right now. Love it. Roddy Jones will be in the building Saturday night in Durham, North Carolina against Duke. Hey, I'll be there too. I'll see you. Oh, there let's there. go. I'll see you there. Looking forward to it. Roddy, always appreciate your time. 
and see you Saturday night in Durham. Of course, you're always good to catch up.